Tony Hembry and welcome to In God We Trust. Today we will look at the claims some Muslims are making about Jesus visiting them in dreams. Several reports from former Muslim followers who converted to Christianity say they have been compelled to do so after a man described as Jesus visited them in their dreams. The most recent claim has come from a former ISIS militant. According to the Youth with a Mission organization, a YWAM worker in the Middle East was contacted by a friend earlier this year, and he was introduced to an ISIS fighter who had killed many Christians. Gina Fadley, director of YWAM, reported to Voice of the Martyrs Radio that the ISIS jihadi confessed not only to killing Christians, but that he had actually enjoyed doing so. And he told this YWAM leader that he had begun having dreams of this man in white who came to him and said, you are killing my people. And he started to feel really sick and uneasy about what he was doing. Now, in another dream, Jesus asked him to follow him, and he was now asking to become a follower of Christ and to be discipled. This seems like an amazing conversion account, but is it too good to be true? Can Muslims, particularly Muslim extremists, surrender to Jesus after dreaming about him? Nabil Quraysh, the author of Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, A Devout Muslim Encounters Christianity, explained the significance of dreams to Muslims in an interview with the Christian Post. He said, in Muslim cultures, people don't see themselves as being able to commune with God. In Islam, people don't expect to have God talk back to them personally. So they ask God for guidance through dreams. That's like the one way that Muslims expect to hear from God. For someone to reach out and ask, God, can you tell me about you? Or if you're Jesus, can you show me a dream? That's not strange at all. That's kind of what Muslims do. Well, aren't dreams and visions kind of what God does too? God has made himself known to man throughout history in general and special revelations. Now, general, general revelation refers to God revealing himself to creation. Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So in a general revelation, God has made himself known to all humankind. His presence and his truth is self-evident in nature. However, the plan of redemption is only made known to us through special revelation. Now, special revelation then is God's way of connecting the creation to the Creator through the redemption of Jesus Christ. Special revelation comes most commonly through the Bible, but also prophets, angels, dreams, visions, and most importantly, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul talks about this very thing in 2 Corinthians 12, 2-4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. Now, there are several instances of special revelation in the Bible. Daniel, Elijah, Mary and Joseph, Paul, Peter, John, etc. But what about now? Can these reports happening throughout the Middle East be true? Well, you can be the judge of that, but let me tell you another Muslim conversion story. In August of 2014, Bob Paulson of Decision Magazine wrote about the visions of a young Saida Bendini, yes, the pastor who has been brutally imprisoned in Iran for the last nine years. At age 20, Paulson writes, Saeed was a devout Muslim. He had found a Bible and started reading it. One night, he was awakened three times by a voice that said, Saeed, I'm coming soon. Go preach my gospel. The third time, the voice was accompanied by a bright light shining through Saeed's bedroom window. Trembling and sweating, Saeed said, I will do it. At that moment, the light moved away, and he saw what appeared to be the back of Jesus exiting through the window. Now, it may be uncommon to us as Westerners because our culture is predominantly familiar with the Holy Trinity and has readily access to the Bible. To a Muslim, however, the concept of God in three persons goes against the very first pillar of Islam. In fact, it's blasphemy. Allah does not share his authority with any other being. And Jesus is considered only a prophet, and his crucifixion and resurrection are myths. That alone may be enough to convince anyone that these dreams and visions are real manifestations of Christ, at least deserving a closer look. Now, it's okay to approach this with a raised brow, but if Saeed went on to become a pastor and not rescind his faith while in prison for so many years, and if this ISIS jihadi has abandoned his loyalty unto Christ and has stopped killing Christians, 
then the visions are legitimate. Put your trust in the words of Jesus in John 5, 17. My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Well, thank you for joining me today. And remember, you can help the ministry of Quick Study and Bible Discovery TV spread the gospel through your giving. One of the ways you can give is by ordering a beautiful faith-inspired t-shirt from our friends at InspireTees.com. Please be sure to type the promo code BDTV at checkout to receive free shipping with your order. Well, until next time, let us fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal, and that is our God in whom we can trust. We'll see you again.